Hi, I'm Miss Vital. I'm eating chocolate, drinking coffee. Yum. This is the first of two podcasts for my AP Biology students on nutrition and digestion. Every meal that we eat is a reminder that we are heterotrophs. We're dependent on a regular supply of food that is derived from other organisms. Animals have a great variety of nutritional adaptations. Rabbits and hares eat a diet of plants and have a large intestinal pouch with bacteria and protists in it that help to digest the cellulose. For any animal, a nutritionally adequate diet is essential for maintaining homeostasis. We classify animals based on the food types and feeding mechanisms that they use. Most animals are opportunistic feeders, but there are three general dietary categories. Herbivores eat mainly autotrophs, which include plants and algae. Examples are gorillas, cows, hares, snails. Carnivores eat other animals. Some examples are sharks, hawks, spiders, snakes. And omnivores regularly consume both plants and animals, or algae instead of plants. Cockroaches, crows, bears, raccoons, and humans are examples of omnivores. There are four main feeding adaptations. The first is suspension feeders. These are aquatic animals that sift small particles from the water. Baleen whales, which include blue whales and humpback whales, and the largest animals ever, actually have baleen plates in their mouth where they sift particles and small organisms from the water. Clams are another example of suspension feeders. Substrate feeders, they live in or on their food source, eating their way through it. Maggots and earthworms are examples of substrate feeders. Most leeches, mosquitoes, hummingbirds, bees are all fluid feeders. And bulk feeders eat large pieces of food. They oftentimes have tentacles or pinchers, claws, fangs, teeth for eating those large pieces of um, food. There are four stages of food processing. The first one is ingestion. This is mainly eating. The second one is digestion. Um, digestion is the process of breaking down uh, your food into small molecules that your body can absorb. It basically breaks um, polymers or macromolecules into their monomers. Enzymatic hydrolysis is the process that breaks down those macromolecules. If you remember, hydrolysis is when bonds are broken and water is added. Enzymatic means that it is aided by enzymes. Digestion includes mechanical and chemical digestion. There are a lot of chemicals that we're going to talk about that are added to the process of digestion that help to break it down, but things like your teeth and the churning of your stomach are mechanical ways that your food is broken down. Third stage is absorption. Absorption mainly occurs in the small intestine, and it's when the animal cells take up the molecules. And elimination is the fourth and final stage where the undigested material passes out of the body. Digestion occurs in specialized compartments, and we're going to um, talk about how different organisms digest their food without digesting themselves. Did you ever wonder how your stomach digests your food but doesn't digest the rest of you? Um, most animals reduce that risk of self-digestion by processing their food in specialized compartments. Intracellular digestion basically talks about food vacuoles. They're organelles with digestive enzymes in them. They're the simplest of the digestive compartments. Heterotrophic protists engulf their food, either through phagocytosis or pinocytosis, and they form vacuoles with the food inside that fuse with lysosomes. Lysosomes contain digestive enzymes. That protective membrane prevents the cytoplasm from being digested. And animals don't, animals use this on the cellular level, but sponges depend on it to digest their food.
Extracellular digestion occurs outside of the cell and it occurs within compartments that are continuous with the outside of the animal's body. Having an extracellular cavity enables animals to eat larger prey. Gastrovascular cavities, we talked about when we talked about some of the simpler animals. We find these in things like cnidarians that have a simple body plan. It's basically a digestive tract with a single opening. It functions in digestion and the distribution of nutrients throughout the body. If you look at this picture here, this is a hydra. Again, it's a type of cnidarian. Hydra are carnivores that sting their prey and stuff the food into their mouth. Specialized cells in the cavity secrete enzymes and other cells engulf the nutrients that are digested extracellularly. The waste exits out of the same hole that the food came in. A complete digestive tract, also called an alimentary canal, is a series of digested tubes with two openings, the mouth and the anus or the cloaca. The tube is organized into special sections to carry out digestion and absorption. In some of our invertebrates and also in things like birds and lizards, we find some digestive organs that are different than what we find in our own bodies. Here in this bird, we see that once the food enters the mouth, it enters the crop, which is kind of like the stomach. It stores food. Then it moves into the dessert, which grinds the food. It generally has gravel and grit and small pebbles even in it that the bird has pecked up, which helps to break down the food in the gizzard. In the intestine, um, absorption of nutrients occurs. And then in, those, in these types of animals, they have a cloaca, which is for eliminating waste amongst other things. And in some animals, there is an anus at the end of the digestive tract. Um, some advantages of, complete di of a complete include that the before the animal is completely digested. We're going to focus on the mammal digestive system, beginning with peristalsis. Peristalsis is the ry rhythmic movement of muscles. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are smooth muscles that contract slow and long, and they help to move the food along. The sphincters are circular muscles, and when they contract, they close. So they regulate the movement of food through the digestive tract. There are accessory glands that are in addition to the organs of the digestive tract, and some of those accessory glands are the salivary glands, the pancreas, the liver, the gallbladder, and we'll talk about what some of those secretions do in a little while. Beginning with the oral cavity. The oral cavity is where physical and chemical digestion begins. Physical digestion, your teeth crush and cut the food. The presence of the food triggers saliva to be released. Humans produce over one liter of saliva a day. That's over a quart. Saliva, again, is chemical digestion. It contains mucin, which is a glycoprotein. The saliva protects the mouth and lubricates the food. It also contains buffers. The buffers neutralize acid and prevent tooth decay. And it contains antibacterial agents, which kill bacteria that may be in your food. Finally, saliva contains salivary amylase, which is an enzyme that hydrolyzes or breaks, breaks down starch and glycogen. The tongue, besides talking is essential in eating. It tastes the food, it moves it around, and it helps to shape the bolus. The bolus is the food ball that moves down into your esophagus. After the mouth, the pharynx is your throat. The pharynx is a junction that opens to the esophagus and the trachea, which is your windpipe. The bolus leaves the oral cavity and enters the pharynx. The epiglottis is a cartilaginous flap that covers the glottis, which is the opening to the trachea. 
when we eat, the trachea moves up and is covered by the epiglottis. This is why the Adam's apple moves up when we swallow. If you place your fingers over your throat and swallow, you will actually feel your voice box, which is your Adam's apple. Girls don't really have an Adam's apple, but you can find it. Move up and down as you swallow. This is to prevent choking. Most people choke when they talk and eat at the same time because in order for you to talk, your windpipe needs to be open so air passes over your voice box. But in order for you to swallow, your windpipe closes so nothing goes down there. If you're talking and eating at the same time, your epiglottis is flipping out, going back and forth because it doesn't know what to do. And a lot of choking occurs when people are talking and eating, which is why you see signs for um, the Heimlich maneuver in restaurants. I'm actually going to show you an adult choking video and a child choking video. They're very short, but it's how the Heimlich maneuver is um, done in adults and children. A person with person an obstructed, obstructed air can't obstructed talk, air or cough. can't talk or cough. Ask cough. if the person Ask can breathe. Ask if the person can breathe. Grab around the upper Grab waist. On the forcefully waist. thrust upward repeatedly. upward repeatedly. If the person collapses, if the person call collapses, 911, call and, begin 911 CPR. and begin CPR. And finally, the esophagus connects the pharynx to the stomach. Peristalsis those muscle contractions move the food through the esophagus so technically you could eat while you were laying down um, but gravity certainly helps to move the food down um, the muscles at the top of the esophagus are voluntary for swallowing